I'm going to talk about squares and square roots. Let's say if I have a number 2. If I multiply this by itself once, I know that 2 times 2 is equal to 4. Now that's the idea of a square, which means that if I multiply a number by itself, I call that a square of a product. The idea sort of comes from finding the area of a square. If I have a square and the length and the width are both equal to 2, <coughs> and if I want to find the area, I do that by multiplying the two sides together. So 2 times 2. And because they happen to be equal, because the two sides happen to be equal, we call a product where we multiply the same two numbers together, we call it square. And there's a special um, way of writing a square. So if I have 2 times 2, it can also be written as 2 with a little 2 on the top right hand side. So if I see this, I call it 2 squared. So 2 squared is really the same as 2 times 2, which is 4. Let's look at another example. If I write 3 with a little 2 on top here, I call it 3 squared. Um, let me write this out. 3 squared. That's how I can read, it, read this. Squared with a D at the end. Like a past tense. Or um, I can also call this the square of 3. So in words, there are these two ways that I can describe this um, 3 with a little 2 on the top right hand side. So if you see this 3 squared symbol, it really means 3 times 3, which is 9. That's the meaning of the square of a number. And it you can just use this symbol for um, any number. Right. Let me, there is also the opposite of a square. For example, um, if I have the number 4, for example, okay, I might want to know what times what gives me 4. All right, I, I might want to know what number, when it is squared, gives me the answer 4? In this case, I know, because I've already done it, I know that 2 squared gives me 4. And, for example, if I want to know what number, when multiplied by itself, gives me a 9, it is 3. 3 squared, or 3 multiplied by itself, gives me a 9. But because there, we, we often need to know, um, we need to think about often the answer to, to such a question. There is a name for this, this opposite way to think about it. It's called square root. So I say that, for example, the square root say the square root of 4 Now the square root of 4 is equal to 2. There is a symbol to describe this, to show this square root of 4. It looks like this. That's the symbol for square root. If I draw this symbol and I write 4 inside the symbol, it means the same thing as the square root of 4. So this square root of 4 is equal to 2. 
So it's square root is like the opposite of doing a square. It's so in the same way, if I if I write down square root of nine like this, it means three. So if I want to find the square root of nine, that means I want to find that number and which when that number is multiplied by itself must give me back the 9. So let's just look at one or two other examples. If I have say um, 4, if I want to find the square of 4, what do I do? The square of 4 would be 4 times 4, which is 16. So 16 is the square of 4. Now what if I want to find the square root of 16? So what times what, what, what number times itself gives me 16? But since I've already done this, I know the answer. Square root of 16 is 4 because 4 times 4 gives 16. Let's do a number, a square, root of a, a square root of a number directly. Say 25. A square root of 25 is 25. We can use a calculator, or if we had some practice in multiplications, we'll know that the answer is 5, because 5 times 5 gives 25. Now, but we have to be careful here. Not all square roots can be found so easily. For example, if I take the very simple example of, say, just... Um, instead of 25, if I have, say, 26, what is the square root of 26? Is it 5 or 6 or some number? No, it's not. Actually, it's some complicated decimals which you can find if you use the calculator. So usually, in fact for most numbers, the square root of that number would be some decimal. It's only for some of these simpler cases that we can easily work out the answer ourselves. And we have a look at the idea of a cube as well. A square is what you get when you multiply a number by itself. Cube is what you get when you multiply a number by itself and multiply that number again. That means if I say I have a number 2 and I multiply it by itself and by itself again, so three of this same number multiplied together, that's called a cube. So this is the cube of the number 2. I call this the cube of 2. It's when you do this. And you know 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. That's the cube of 2. And like for the square, there is a, a symbol for this. A way to write it more simply. And that's 2 with a little 3 on top. So the little number 3 there just means that you have 3 of the 2's multiplied together. That's the symbol, and that's 8. And if you like, you can think of this as um, well, the square was sort of connected to the area of a square. So the cube is also related to a cube. If I have a cube that looks like this, with a side of 2, 2 and 2. Then the volume of the cube will be 2 times 2 times 2. You'll see more of this in geometry. And that sort of is the reason why um, we call this, this a cube. Okay? Right. And like for the square, 
we have square root. So for cube, we have cube root. And cube root is like the opposite of the cube. So if I have the number 8, and I want to find the cube root of 8, that means I want to find a number whose cube is equal to 8. Now the cube root has this symbol. We start with a sign that looks like a square root, and we have a little 3 on the left. So this funny symbol here is called a cube root. And the cube root of 8 is actually 2. Right? Like I said, the cube root is like the, the reverse idea of a cube. So the answer for the cube root is 2 because the cube of 2 gives you 8. So you find the opposite thing from the cube. Right, we'll stop here for this part.